Hey everybody, this is Tom Mason, and I'm back with another video on sculpting miniatures. Uh, but today, instead of um, actually sculpting the miniature, I thought we'd take a little break and I would go over some of my favorite tools, uh, the ones that I use for about 90% of all the work. And um, frankly, you could do an entire miniature with just these four tools, maybe even uh, fewer, but this is what I like to use. So let's get into it. These are the four tools that I use for the majority of my sculpting. I'm going to go through each one individually and explain you know, what I use them for, why I like them so much, and uh, you know, the things you can use them for. First up is the uh, flat chisel clay shaper. This particular one is size zero and is a firm. Uh, the ones with the black tips are considered are called extra firm, and I have to admit I have been using those uh, for work more recently, and I have started to prefer them, but I just haven't gotten a set for home. But either one works fine; it's just what you're used to. Uh, this, as you've probably seen in my other videos, this is uh, the, the tool I start with and tend to use uh, throughout the sculpting, especially if you're working mostly with putty. But what I use it for is for that initial layer of green stuff on the armature when you're building it up um, before the clay goes on. Uh, sometimes I will use it for clay detailing as well, but it's a huge, huge help when you are working with putty. Next up is a tool called the Wax 5. This is really just a burnishing tool and it has two ends as you can see, but I only ever use this side, which is a large tapered uh, burnishing tool. Any sort of tool like this will work. This is just the one I happen to get and you're welcome to try and track it down but it's very difficult to find. Um, I've only ever found it from one place uh, in Australia. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Aetherworks, I think. Yes. Uh, but I'll put, try and put the notes in the description if you want to uh, find it. It's a little expensive but it is very nice. It's got a good heft, nice size but this is a very important tool. Um, if these four tools I said were the majority of my sculpting, well, this is the majority of their sculpting even, and, and I use them all quite a bit. But this one, I use all my initial bulking as I'm putting in folds into cloth. I mean, just any sort of uh, sculpting I can do, I do with this, unless I have to go down to a smaller size or use a more specialized tool. It's just very nice not to have to be switching all the time until you really need to. Next up is this small spatula tool. It's kind of a baby version of the Wax 5, but um, again, I typically only use this end, sometimes this one, but it's kind of in between. I, I, I tend to either just use the Wax 5 for the large areas and then just use this for the little areas. I don't tend to bother with this kind of middle range for the most part, but it is pretty nice. Anyways, this tool is uh, actually custom made. It's a piece of wire that's been hammered out and rounded at the tip, but you can find things like this uh, that are much smaller, some dental tools, things like that. But again, this, this is just when I'm trying to get into small areas that the larger main sculpting tool can't work into, uh, but it's very important too. Last but not least, definitely not least, uh, is the scalpel. And this really comes to personal preference. Really, you can use, I, you know, I would suggest using a scalpel or a uh, X-Acto blade, but um, just as I've sculpted over the years, what I tend to lean towards is um, a number 15, I think. Let me check. Yep, number 15 scalpel blade. Um, I do, I don't know if you notice, there's kind of a notch missing out of here. Um, but I, I modify mine slightly with a Dremel tool just to make the blade a little um, thinner, just to help get into places. But the reason I like this uh, more than an X-Acto is because it has a flat area and it has this rounded area. So you can, with one tool, you can basically have it be a long slicing tool, or you can use um, make basically make shorter flat areas, even though it's slightly rounded. Um, 
and you still have a tip, so you can make small indentions and uh, pokes into your, your miniature. Now, granted, I, I do still use an X-Acto blade uh, from time to time. Sometimes you just need that longer uh, blade, and the point is, you know, more pointy, so that's useful as well. But, like I said, these are, these are the tools that I use the majority of in my sculpting, and if I were to be without uh, any of these, uh, I would notice it, and uh, or maybe I should put it another way. I could sculpt without any of the other tools in my arsenal and make a miniature and feel pretty good about it. All the other tools, they're great, but they really make, they just make the job of these four a little easier. But you can still um, do quite a lot of sculpting with these four general tools. All right, I know I said there were just four tools, but I wanted to give an honorable mention to one that you can technically make two tools out of, but uh, and that would be a probe or a needle. Um, again, if, you, if you're if you trying to be very minimalistic, just get a needle, uh, like a clothes, uh, clothing needle, you know, like pinning a shirt or something. Uh, the thinner, the better. If you want, you can get a, a, a more of like a sewing needle if you need one that's a little thicker, but, um, at least for what I use these for, I, I need it to be a very small puncturing device. So this is extremely useful because you have a slight rounded edge where you can press and, and make some details. But most importantly, it's, it's very long and sharp. So you can get in and make little divots. Excuse me, I keep hiccuping or something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the one additional thing you can do to this, and I have these as two tools, but I actually would suggest um, having one straight like this and then another one, you could basically take that same needle, but just basically bend it into a hook. This is extremely useful because when you're sculpting, um, like this, you can, your hand is down here, but it's, you know, your tool is only going up there. Well, sometimes a piece of the model or your, your stand will be in the way. And so you can't get in from that angle. Well, if you have one that's been bent into a hook like this, you can angle your hand like this from the side, I mean, all sorts of ways, and you can still get the tool up into um, hard to reach places. All right, that's it for uh, basic tools right now. As you can see, though, I do have uh, many other tools in my arsenal, and I'll definitely go over them again, or, you know, in the future. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to be able to show you kind of the basics, what you can get away with and literally be able to sculpt anything. You know, it still will take lots of practice, um, getting used to the tools, and I'm not guaranteeing that my tools will be best for you, but this is what I um, have picked up over the years and, and learned to use, and uh, I guess what your take I would suggest the takeaway should be is um, <clears throat> look at them more as the general roles that they, uh, that they fit, and then find, if you have a preference, you know, a scalpel over an exacto blade or vice versa, you know, use the one you like. Both of them still um, fulfill the same role. Uh, and that's what you need. That's the important part. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment, of course, and I'll do my best to get back to those. I post videos every other Tuesday, so it'll be one another two weeks. And uh, thanks for watching. Now, go sculpt some miniatures.